All right, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Chakradash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who do well and who teach well. Much peace and mercy to the hopeful elect, you brothers and you sisters, wholeheartedly waiting upon the Lord Yahweh to send his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, to deliver us from this captivity, to Asi Shalom. It's going to be a quick in transit video. And the topic is going to be the furnace of adversity. You know, I was meditating earlier. Um, you know, I was I was doing some cooking. I was just meditating on uh, the different trials and the different tribulations that we experience while we're in this truth are, are very much necessary for our growth and character development. You know. The things that we go through, um, you know, as it reads, let me actually go here, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. <clears throat> there have no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man, but the Most High is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a, a way to escape, that he may be, that ye may be able to bear it. So the Heavenly Father is going to send certain trials and tribulations and temptations within your life, you know. But the Heavenly Father, like it reads here, is faithful. You know, he's not going to put you in a predicament that you're not going to be able to recover from. You know, especially if you are a man of the Lord. If you are a man of the Lord, you know, the Holy Spirit is with, the, with uh, you know, dwelling with you, he's supping with you. You think the Heavenly Father is going to put you in a predicament where you're just going to be completely through, utterly destroyed? No. You know, we have to make sure uh, our ways is pleasing unto the Heavenly Father. The scriptures say, when a man's ways please the, the, the you know, just grab it. Proverbs 16 and 7, when a man's ways please the Lord. <coughs> Like he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. You see that? So, if your ways are contrary to your how about Shmi Al Shai, you have every you have every right to be afraid. You have every right to be uh, nervous. <laughs> However, if you're doing that which is right, you're making your videos, you're fasting, you're praying. You know, you you, you are showing faith and charity. You're doing all these things that the scriptures telling us, you know, tell us us to do, but but you're you're in fear of uh, man. I need you to. <laughs> God dang. <laughs> People can't merge on the freeway, man. Um, yeah, if your ways are pleasing unto the Lord, then you think He's gonna put you in a predicament where that you can't uh, learn from. You know, a predicament or a, a, a situation where you, you know, you, you you come out pretty much unscathed. <clears throat> it's the heavenly Father, man. Uh, as it is written, He is long suffering, forever merciful. You know, He's not going to do iniquity. He's not going to do unrighteousness. So let's jump back here. Sirach chapter two, verse four. Oh, I'm gonna start verse. I'm gonna start all the way at the top, man. Go. Look at this goddamn woman driving, phone in the left hand, face down. That's craziness, you know. <laughs> okay, gotta hold the phone up. All right, Sirach one and Sirach two and one. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord Yahweh, prepare thy soul for temptation. You see, so we're serving the Lord. You have to prepare yourself for certain temptations. You know, I was watching uh, the other Dr. Dimash Pod's video about, you know, rebuking evil spirits and evil thoughts. Because those can be a, a, a part of your temptation. If you're going through, you know, the doubt demons, you have to make sure you're rebuking those spirits, man. Because it can waver your faith. And whatever else the temptation may be, whatever, whatever it may be, it might be money, it might be women. You know, however, uh, ultimately it's going to be with your faith because that's the ultimate temptation 
uh, something that can tempt you from not serving the Lord. <clears throat> Verse 2, set thine heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. What, what main trouble are we waiting for? We're waiting for Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 30 and 7. So when that day comes, make not haste. Don't be jumping into conclusions and trying to figure out. Who, who. Hey, it says, set thy heart aright. How do you set your heart aright? By, with these scriptures. Isaiah 33 and 6. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. The strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is your treasure. It says, and constantly endure. What? Be impatient. Because patience is suffering. You see? Patience is suffering. You know, if you're you, you, if you're not um, suffering, then what are you enduring? Right? Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou... Um, let me read this again. Uh, verse 2, the latter part. It says, and make not haste in time of trouble. You see that? So when the time of Jacob's trouble come, you want to be in a sound mind. You want to take deep breaths. You want to sit back. All right, let's see what the Lord need. What, what the Lord want me to do next. What, you know, where should I go next? What should be my next move? Through the Spirit. Let me let me be circumspect. Let me look. Let me check my surroundings. Right. That's what a prudent man would do. But a person with no stability, a person with no understanding of of, of what's to come on this earth, they're gonna panic. They're gonna they're gonna um <laughs> you know. You're going to bug out, man. Short and simple. Verse 3. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. So there's going to be a time where you're going to feel like you, you have been forsaken. You know, Yahweh Shai at his lowest, when he was on the cross, felt like he was forsaken. He said, uh, um, you know, Allah, yeah, Allah, yeah, why, uh, he said, Eli, Eli, why hast thou forsaken me? Which he was saying, Allah, meaning power. You know, my power, my power. Why is thou forsaken me? Right? So even Yahweh Shai felt forsaken. He felt the presence of the Lord, you know, go from him. However, what? He was, he was what? Increased at his last end. Now he's sitting on the right hand of the Father in full glory, majesty and power. And he's patiently waiting, right? He's suffering too. Patiently waiting to enact his revenge upon on those that have uh, smitten him and, 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 and all the atrocities that they did to Yahweh Shai, um, you know, at that time. You know, they, uh, they, they fed him gall and vinegar. You know, they, they, they whipped him. They put the crowns, uh, thorns upon his head. You know, they mocked him, spat on him. Everything, man. You think he's not going to get his revenge? Verse 4. What, whatsoever is brought upon upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. And that's going to happen very soon. You know, we're going to lose everything on this side, man. We're going to lose our families. We're going to lose our... And, the, and and I say families in the sense of those that are not protected um, with the election. You know, Ezekiel 94. Uh, that, that mark of the exemption from judgment well, that's what I mean like mothers and brothers and things like that and however if the heavenly father if it's in his will to deliver your mom he's going to deliver if it's in his will to deliver your brother your sister your aunts your uncles whoever nephews and nieces and, and sons and daughters then that's up to the heavenly father that's up to him. that's his discretion but the scriptures say seek out your own salvation with fear and trembling you know don't don't be worrying too much about somebody else's salvation and you ain't even on you ain't even on the boat yet you know what i'm saying we ain't on we ain't on the ships yet man we don't know you see now this is the point this is what i wanted to get to verse five for gold is tried in the fire an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity so this is it we're going through the furnace of adversity so the different trials and the different tribulations that you um experience on this size ultimately supposed to build you up it's supposed to build character you know it's supposed to um refine you when you go to isaiah 48 and 10 isaiah chapter 48 verse 10 what happened god damn it all right uh i'm gonna start at nine 
Isaiah 48 and 9. For my namesake will I defer mine anger, and for my praise will I refrain for thee that I cut thee not off. So this is not of us, man. You know, Yahweh Shai, he, he died for our sins so that we could be adopted back to the, to the Heavenly Father. You know, if it was not for his sacrifice, we would still be through, man. We wouldn't be we wouldn't be teaching this word. We would be, we, shit, man. I don't know where we would be at if it wasn't for the sacrifice of, love of our Lord and Savior. You see, so this is not of us, man. This is a, a, a higher calling. This is a higher uh, uh, act of, of, of events. Verse 10, behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. So the Heavenly Father, he, he, he uses these, these methods to purge out the impurities within us, you know, the fire. Don't, don't run from the fire, the spiritual fire, so to speak. You know, we, we don't, we, we run away from that, that physical fire. We don't want to get, we don't want to touch that heat. We want that, that, that spiritual fire so that, that our impurities can be purged from us. So that we can be seen, uh, as it is written in Revelation, the 14th chapter, uh, those that had no guile in their mouths. Let's read that. Revelation chapter 14. Uh, I think it's verse. Yeah. I'm going to start at verse 4. These are they which are not defiled with women. Women goes into different doctrines and different philosophies. You, know, you can read uh, Proverbs 6 chapter, Proverbs 7 chapter. It goes into that. For they are virgins, right? Uh, even Paul said it. I have espoused you unto one husband. What the fuck? <laughs> I have espoused you. Um, you know, I'm, I'm jealous over you with uh, godly jealousy. I have espoused you unto one husband. Uh, I think that. Let me see. Second Corinthians. That man. And two. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you. As a chaste version to Yahweh Shai. You see? So oh, let's go. Oh, yep. Let's go back. Let's go back here. Revelation 14 and 4. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the, the land whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto the most high and to the Lamb. So this is the group of, of people that we pray and hope and beg that we are a part of. Right? The first fruits, the elect, 144,000. It talks about that in the first verse. And then it also talks about um, the 144,000 in Revelation 7 chapter. Uh, verse 5, this is one. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of the Most High. And how is that? How did that happen? It was through the washing of the word, through the sanctifying of the word. Do that the why the mark of exemption right these things are all things that that we had no control or power of you know it was given unto us that's why scriptures say for ye are saved through grace you know it is, it is not by works but by grace for if it was by works you have you know you know <laughs> come on man it's not of us man the why do you how about show me how shy call her lawyer how about show me how shy so don't run from the fire Allow the fire to, to purge you from your impurities. You know? You got to walk in this thing with confidence. Knowing and, and with the surety that the Heavenly Father is on your side. The Heavenly Father is on our side, man. He's not on these people's side. These fucking uh, weirdos and, and, you know, these demons and, and creepy crawly things, man. These, these people are, are everything that the Heavenly Father hates about this, about, um, you know, this earth right now, man. That's why he wants to shoot. In the past, he destroyed it with water. This time, it's going to be destroyed with fire. Got Becky out here running. <laughs> this world is going to be destroyed with fire, man. You see? And cleansed. It won't be completely destroyed. Scriptures talk about the earth endureth forever. You know, it was created to... Uh, be inhabited, but he's going to cleanse a lot of a, a lot of this earth with that that thermonuclear missile fire. See, 
So, hey, I'm going to end it there, man, because I can keep going. <laughs> you know, I made a point. Don't don't be afraid of that fire, man. The Lord is purging us. He's changing us. You know, we're being quickened. Continue to pray. Continue to, to, to trust in the names that, that we have been assured of. Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai. Until next time, I want to give all praises again to Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham Rechakodash, Shalom.